Hey guys, MC Fix It here. We are going to be working on a 2006 Honda Ridgeline. We are going to replace the seal that is leaking right here on your CV axle. A little bit of transmission fluid. A lot's coming out now because I just took it off, but it was just dripping just a little bit. So the number is a 91205P0X005. It's a Honda part and uh, we're gonna have to pull it and put the new one back in. I'm gonna walk through all the tools and supplies. This is kind of a lengthy project, but uh, stick around, it will be worth it to show you exactly how to fix this. Here are the tools and the supplies that you're gonna need for this video. You're gonna wanna get a Honda Genuine Part Seal, um, and it is 91205P0X005. I do encourage you to make sure it does say Honda on it. Um, big fan of making sure a lot of the Honda parts are Honda. Um, also the automatic transmission fluid, ATFDW-1. Make sure you get at least one quart. That's about how much I used. And also when I did my control arms in another video, that's how much I used as well. Um, you're going to want some kind of floor jack, some kind of uh, stand to put it on. It's right behind here to make sure you're up off um, a block, uh, a bucket, paper towels, and then you're gonna need a series of other tools. Um, you're gonna want uh, a couple of different types of hammers, maybe a chisel or some kind of good screwdriver, a uh, like a Phillips. Um, a Sharpie is helpful when you are measuring out how much fluid you actually used. Um, I used two six inch and a 17 millimeter for the nut on top with a ratchet. Um, a 17 millimeter wrench, 17 millimeter, uh, half inch socket so I could break it off easy on that sway bar, 19 millimeter for the ball joint, 22 millimeter for the tire, um, and then a 100 uh, foot pound torque stick, 36 millimeter for the wheel hub, a wrench that allows you to have torque specs on it. Um, you are gonna want a ball joint separator. I believe that's about an inch and a third, I think is what it said. I lost the package and there's no markings on this, so that's great. Um, and then a seal puller is really helpful so you don't damage the seal area. It just lets you get up in there and pull that seal out nice and easily. Um, a funnel, an oil pan. Um, I ended up using a crowbar to help pop off the CV axle. Um, and then I use a half inch. You can use pneumatic tools as well, doesn't matter. Uh, impact gun is super helpful to get stuff off quickly. These are all the tools and supplies that I use to make this video. Um, there are probably other ways you could do it in other tools, but this worked for me and I hope it works for you as well. Let's go ahead and jump in, getting that wheel off uh, after we jack up the car and go ahead and get that seal replaced. Um, I like to go ahead and put a block in right away and kick that back where it doesn't have any rollback. My driveway does slope that direction a little bit. Go ahead and unlock your vehicle, open it up, go ahead and pop open the, the hood and push down on the emergency brake. So now that we're under here, we're gonna go ahead and jack up on this point. Your emergency brake is already on and so The goal is to get the tires in the air, which you will be able to see just on both sides. And you just keep pumping this up. And then we'll go ahead and set the jack stands. So you're gonna look for the frame of the vehicle. In fact, I'm gonna jack it up just a little bit more. So you go ahead and take your jack stand and put it up under the frame of the vehicle. It's probably hard to see that angle, but it's up under there. Is 
same thing, go ahead and put it up underneath. The reason we do that is we want that to really hold and support that well. So now we'll come back here and slowly let this down. And those jack stands will support the vehicle. Just like that. I did use a little block of wood, which that does sometimes get stuck on that piece right there. But you can see both wheels are off the ground, which is exactly what we want. They're supported with both of the jack stands. Make sure, make sure, make sure it's done that way. Go ahead and get an impact gun with 22 millimeter. And we'll just spin each of these off. Go ahead and grab a hammer. We need to bend this back off. Then this is a 36 millimeter. And we're just going to break this off. So I'm gonna spin it kind of back on for right now. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and get the ball joint and uh, get that cotter pin off and go ahead and uh, loosen it up and push it down so we can go ahead and pull off the CV axle, which is a new CV axle. It may look brand new because it is. Uh, it did develop a little bit of leak and got to make sure we put the right seal back on it. So I had to get this one from Honda. So we're going to go ahead and take off the cotter pin. We will need to save that because it is a very specific one for this vehicle. And I just used a screwdriver and just pulled it straight out. Gonna need a 19 millimeter. And because I just changed this out, you'll see how easy this one comes off. Uh, sometimes they're a bit more of a bear than that. It is a castle nut with that cotter pin. Save both of those. Uh, then you are going to need a pickle fork. And I'm hoping because this has just been put on there, I can do it really easily without damaging anything. So the goal of this is to get this around the boot so you don't tear the boot. I believe this is like about an inch and a eighth, I think. Go ahead and push that down. There it is. So that is out. The next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get this back off. So the goal now is we're gonna start hitting this thread back through. So you are gonna to wanna to spin it off a little bit and you can go ahead using a rubber mallet here. Another thing you can do so you don't damage it is uh, go ahead and grab your 36 millimeter socket you can put it back on there and so the goal of this should be that it starts to go through uh, this may be something you do have to kind of stand up for to hit and you can kind of spin it to the left And each time it's gone in further and further. We're almost to the point where it's all the way out. So now that that's almost all the way, and I'll give you a little bit better camera angle. Now that it's all the way through there, we're gonna go ahead and take off one of the sway bar links. I think it's just easier to take that off um, right up over here and uh, gives you a little bit better access to move this back and forth. So for this, you're gonna need a 17 millimeter ratchet and socket. Um, this are, these are not the original ones, so you will want to make sure if you have the original ones that you follow what it needs to be. I believe it's a six millimeter hex in the middle, but this does go much quicker and it's out. And so you just push this off to the side. I do like to go ahead and just spin that right back on there. That way you're right where you need to be. 
So the next thing is to pull the CV through the uh, knuckle, and as you're doing that, you're just gonna kinda pull it straight out towards you. I had to do a voiceover in this section because I had some issues with audio, but just continue to pull that forward and then go to the back side and actually pull out your CV axle. Okay, now as you pull this out, I like to go ahead and place a bucket underneath it so it has something to rest on and it doesn't get destroyed. So what you're gonna want is make sure you got uh, something to catch any transmission fluid because there will be some that comes off of it. And we need to go ahead and pop this off. So I like to use a crowbar and go ahead and get up back behind here. And you do want to be careful. You don't want to crack your transmission casing, but you do got to get it back here and into position to begin to pop this off. It's getting close because you can start to see the transmission fluid starting to leak. That's kind of a normal, not necessarily great sign, but that is what it will do. Okay, you didn't hear it, but it did pop just a little bit. And the whole thing should come out. And it will leak out that transmission fluid. And so that seal right there is what we are going to be replacing. So that seal gets damaged over time. And uh, I'm assuming that's exactly what happened because it is leaking out just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up all around it. It's gonna continue to leak transmission fluid which is fine we are going to be using a uh, seal puller tool it's used for some other things too but this should help us be able to get in and be able to pull the seal out kind of hook in and around it it is very tight in this location and it popped out it's exactly what we wanted So this was the seal. You can tell it's got some wear on it. Um, and so I went ahead and got that Honda part. We'll go ahead and begin putting it in place. Um, this one does look just a touch different in design. Um, you can see that some of the spring here is kind of worn out. You can see it a lot better on this one. I don't know if it's just because it's new, um, but there is a little bit of oil on the inside. Grease, I guess you would call it. Um, and so we will go ahead and begin to put this one in place. You do not want to drop it down in your pan if you can avoid that. It is very tight and cramped in here, so take your time, do it right the first time. You can also seat it with a socket that's the same size as the seal if you can't press it in by hand. I'm just examining it to make sure it looks like it's the same on all sides. So when you push this thing in, you will want to make sure it is flush all the way around, which is exactly what it is right now. I am going to clean up just a touch of my mess up here because this will be a little harder to get to later. So I had a little bit of transmission fluid leak. So we'll go ahead and clean that up. You might be looking that there's a lot of different things that have been replaced. I got lots of videos either out or coming out with that all in there. And so I hope that's helpful to you. We'll go ahead and put it back in kind of the same way we took it out. You're going to put it up. I do like to use that uh, container that I had. That bucket does help kind of hold it in place. And you need to kind of line up the gears.
There it goes. It should be flush and you should also hear it stop. We're gonna go ahead and move the camera to the other side so you can see where I'm gonna insert it back in. So now we're gonna go ahead and put this back in. And you will wanna make sure the splines are aligned. So you should be able to kind of freely move your wheel back and forth as needed. To get to go ahead and scoot that bucket out and go ahead and push down that control arm and really make sure it's getting seated properly. There it goes. And that just kind of fell right into place. That doesn't always happen, but because everything's new, it probably did. Um, and then you'll go ahead and begin to put your castle nut back on. And remember, that's that 19 millimeter. It is supposed to be, I believe, 69 foot pounds of torque, but I don't know how to do that. So I'm gonna make sure it's nice and tight and then give it one extra oomph. If you do know how to do that, please comment on this video. Let me know if there's a specialty tool that I need to be getting that I don't currently have. So it's just starting to get hand tight. So I'm probably gonna do a quarter turn more now, just to make sure that thing's not coming off in the future. So go ahead and grab that cotter pin. Go ahead and place it back on that castle nut. And that'll just help make sure that does not come back out. Now we still have two more things to do. We got to get the sway bar and the front nut back on. So we'll jump onto the sway bar first. So we'll go ahead and twist the nut back off of this that we put on and go ahead and get it lined back up, push it through and we're just going to spin it on by hand. We're gonna take a 17 millimeter. We'll go ahead and put that up on the back side. And then we need another 17 millimeter. That will be 58 foot pounds of torque. All I have is my big heavy duty one today. I uh, didn't pull out the small one, so it may take an extra second or two. And you're kind of cramped on space in here. So you're just going till it clicks. There it is. So that's tightened back up to spec. And then we're gonna come out and put the nut on the front. So if I did not just replace this CV axle, this would have probably been a little harder to get into place properly because it's a brand new one. It did go in pretty quick. Um, if you're having problems, you can go ahead and put, uh, put some force behind it. Um, sometimes you can also, you wouldn't want to put this on yet. Just go ahead and take your hammer and you can hit it into place. You might want to put the studs on, uh, the lug nuts. So if you do accidentally hit it, you're not gonna damage threads, but I also use a rubber mallet. It does help kind of keep everything nice and safe. Go ahead and spin this down. This is gonna be 200 and 240 foot pounds of torque. 36 millimeter. And then the next thing you are going to want to do is go ahead and hit this back in. Um, I do prefer to uh, 
You can use a lot of different things, but I'm actually gonna just use a little chisel here just to make sure it goes back to where I want it. And this just locks it in place. Um, that allows that not to slip off. That is super, super important. You do not want your wheel hub flying off. That's a bad situation for you and everyone on the road around you. So be very careful, knock that in properly, do what it takes to get that right. Go and grab your tire and go ahead and put it in. I like to spin each of the lug nuts by hand. At least four or five times. This just helps make sure you don't strip any of these. Gonna use a 22 millimeter, 100 foot pound torque stick. It is 94, but 100 will work fine. I like to go in a star pattern to so make sure that they're evenly tightened. I then go back and hit it again. I do this at least three times. That will ensure it's properly torqued down. So at this point, you can go ahead and remove those two jack stands. Again, they're just that extra safety measure. These jack stands, they're pretty basic ones. Most of them have some kind of lever that you pull up on and, they, and then they collapse down. Lower this down a little bit, turn it to the left just slowly and everything kind of comes down. So there's a few ways to determine how much transmission fluid you lost. A lot of these will have different lines on them that you may or may not be able to read clearly. Um, it looks like it's about a quart, but my driveway slopes just a little bit. Uh, so the other way is to go ahead and mark on a jug that has the ability to determine how many quarts or liters you need. Because you're going to have to dispose of this anyways. And uh, so I'm going to, it's other transmission fluid. So I'm going to go ahead and pour it in. Now we're still going to do it the conventional way. Oh, don't spill like I just did a little bit there. Always do it on cardboard as well. That will save lots of messes. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and look and it is, it is exactly one liter from where the other one was. And so this is just an easy way to do it. Um, it's, I think it's a little bit more accurate than just looking in a pan, especially if you have any slope in your driveway. So we'll go ahead and grab one liter, or one quart, I'm sorry, I said liter, but quart and liter, pretty much identical. Um, and then we'll go ahead and test it. And so I do use the Honda Automatic Transmission Fluid, ATF DW1. The stuff is the original that came with it. Uh, changed out a couple of times with this. It's worth getting the uh, Honda Genuine stuff. So this bolt is a little difficult to see, uh, but it is definitely gettable. It is right down here. Um, so this is like your master cylinder and reservoir. And so right down past it is where that is. So go ahead and grab a 17 millimeter. I'm gonna stuff just a little bit of blue towel in there to give me a little bit ability to get it back up. I'm using two extensions on this ratchet. Once you've done it a couple of times, you can go ahead and begin to twist it off. And the hope is that comes off just like that. That's exactly how we want it to come off. That little bit of paper towel. You're gonna get about a 10 to 12 inch funnel and slowly put that down in and don't drop it like I just did, which is gonna be a pain to get out now. Right 
right there. Do make sure your funnel is clean. There is a little bit of outside dirt, but I did make sure the inside was cleaned beforehand. And then we'll go ahead and spin off the cap. So I am gonna go ahead and pour it very, very carefully, trying not to get on anything. The first couple little bit is really probably the most difficult. Go slow. It's kind of out of the camera angle, but I am using the cover for the engine to just hold on to the bottle. And check periodically to make sure it is all going down right where it's supposed to. The other thing you can do, it's going to be out of the camera angle, but you can pull up on the dipstick and that should give you a little bit better flow on this. Yeah, it's working a little better now. I just kind of pulled it up and set it off to the side. Sorry, I can't move camera angles in the middle, but... I probably have this funnel shoved down just a little too far so it's not letting good air flow. But again, it's fine. Just let it take its time. I did not want it falling out, which I have had before, not on this vehicle, but on another. And it just makes a huge mess. So it will go down, just give it time. And I like to always go ahead and put the cap back on and then recycle properly however your area has recycling. So go ahead and make sure that's all the way down there and all drained. And then kind of try to pull it out relatively quick so you don't leak anywhere and grab some paper towels and put on the end of it. <clears throat> and then we're going to grab that 17 millimeter. Go ahead and put it back on. Now I'm not going to put this one on super tight because I am going to check to make sure it is filled a couple of different times. Um, I'm going to spare you some of those details in this video, but I'll explain kind of what I'm doing. So if you go ahead and pull that off. So you'll go ahead and come over here. This is where I pulled it out. Put it back down in. It is the yellow handled one. And then go ahead and wipe it off. Clean paper towel each time. And I know I have not run the engine in a while, but that's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of give you a starting point of where it's at. So it is just passed. So that's really good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start the engine, uh, run it a couple of minutes, uh, then uh, come check this again after the engine is off. And make sure it's between those two dots. And just keep doing so until you're all the way to the full. I like it to be up near that second dot just to make sure I have plenty of fluid in there. Um, and then you're pretty much ready to go. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was very helpful as I walk through all the different steps. If you have any comments, go ahead and let me know uh, what your comments are. Um, if you like the video and you haven't subscribed yet, please try and go ahead and click that subscribe button. That really does help out this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching.